So yeah, let's pick him. Attack! Move me to a space next to my foe. So yeah, this is basically the introduction to the famous weapon triangle system in these games. Yeah, Shadow Dragon was alright. It's I didn't care for the art style of Shadow Dragon, but I have to finish it. I mean, I own all the games that came out over here, Ex with the exception of the two newest ones. Like I haven't played um, Fates or I forget the name of them, but the new ones that came out, you know which ones. Just because I didn't like the way that um, it Artificial handled the the game's release. Like I don't think that I should pay like sixty dollars to. You know, if it was like a Pokemon model, we're like, okay, like, each game is representative of a family you pick, and it's the same story, I wouldn't mind it, but like, I don't want to have to pay like 60 $90 for three games to be able to see the full story. I just thought it was very greedy, and I chose not to support that. You're hopeless. If you don't take fighting more seriously, you're going to find yourself on the end of a blade. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Truth be told, I forgot to buy a sword. Forgot? Or were you simply too busy dallying with the ladies? Don't be so mad, I'll be fine with Lance. I'm that good. I prefer to rely on your skill, not your empty bragging. Take my spare blade and use it to attack next time. Are you sure? My thanks, Kent. You're almost more trouble than you're worth. Almost. Got an iron sword. Matt, allow me to make up for my companion's blunder. I'm at your command. Weapons that's the new hierarchy. Yeah, so it explains the weapon triangle system. Basically, swords beat axes, axes beat lances, and lances beat swords. That's okay. I mean, if a game is good, a game is good, and you should buy it. Like, that's completely fine. I just, you know, like, I'm not rich. Like, I have no money. I'm trying to make this Twitch channel <laughs> successful enough to the point where I could just, you know, buy the things I want. Like, if money wasn't an option for me, or, like didn't matter for me, I'll say, then I would have probably bought those games, like, no problem. But, like, if for me, it was just the idea that, like, they were on the verge of... Yeah, I know. They were on the verge of, like, losing, you know, their whole... Their company was going under, and then, like, you know, Awakening comes out, and it revives them, and it revives people's interest in Fire Emblem. And then, so, what they, you know... Instead of being grateful and giving us, you know, a fair product, they give us, like, this overpriced thing that you have to buy three copies of. And it, I just didn't, just didn't like it, but, you know, I'm not gonna blame anybody for buying it. Like, if I had the money, I would do it for sure, but I don't, unfortunately. And this is also an explanation of terrain. Say, no, you alright? Yes, I was able to dodge in time. I can't believe you ate my sword stroke so easily. This is no jest. Look closely. The enemy is sitting in the woods. Barons just make it difficult to attack, don't they? You're right. I was so focused on attacking. I didn't see. Your lack of attention may someday cost you your life. Fine, understand it. Let it go, Kent. If you truly understand, then act like it. Kent worries too much. He's going to grow old before his time. Each type of terrain has unique characters. For example, look at woods and plains, battle enemy, blah, 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 blah. I'll do a much quicker job of explaining. I'm ready for combat, command me as well. So if you notice, whenever you put your cursor over a tile, it lets you know. So this is plain. It has a defense of zero and an avoid of zero, which means it's the most neutral tile to attack from or be attacked on. You don't get any defensive bonuses, but neither does your opponent. But if you go over forest, you see it has a defense of one and an avoid of 20. What that means is, you see her defense score right here? Like, Linz is two. When she's in a forest, it goes up to three. And her avoid right now is 46. When she's, I think she's actually on a forest tile right now, yeah. So when she's not in a forest tile, her avoid is normally 26. So basically it's saying, you know, if you can, try to, you know, do your best to try to take advantage of terrain and, and use that, you know, to your advantage. Like, use it to make the battle go in your favor, you know, most of the time. It's like, oh, the knights go to the woods, right? Blah, blah, like... Unfortunately, normal kind of tells you where to go, like, for a lot of <laughs> this campaign, so, you know, we're just gonna have to deal with that. But when you play out on hard, you can make your own decisions. And... 
like personally, I could have moved her. Hang on, I'll get back to reading this in a second. I just want to finish my point. Yeah, 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 I got it. So, like, I wanted to move her right here. Because this bandit wouldn't have been able to attack her anyways, and I still could have gotten, like, right here on this next turn. I don't know. It just seems like less movements for me. Less movement. Less turns, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yes, thank you. Yes, please, please, just let me play the game. Thank you. Alright, so I'm gonna move here. Usually, from my experience, uh, it's always best to be attacked than do the attacking, unless you know for a fact that you're going to have that ha finish off your opponent in the one turn that you take. Like, it's always been, like, my experience that, like, see, he can't attack me twice, but if he could, it would have been, like, I would have been in, like, you know, hot water. But, um, if they attack you first, you have more options to, like, oh, shit, if I need to get out of there, then you can move your unit afterwards. And it's, like, my preferred method of engaging in combat is to, like, be attacked rather than do the attacking, because it leaves you open. So, see, I can move her here, and, the op like, he can attack her, or I'm gonna give him also the option to attack... Kent. Either way, it works for me, because that just means that, um... You know, he's gonna attack one of my units in the forest, and he's gonna have an even smaller chance of being successful. Generally, I try to keep all my units equally leveled as well. Like, it's very tempting to try and give Lynn all the experience because she's your main character, but you kinda wanna spread it around. So, I think, well, we need to have him attack to give Kent the kill anyway. But see, in this instance, it's fine, because I know that when my turn is over, there's no chance of me being counterattacked and taking extra damage that I don't need to. And then we just finish him off. This should level me up. I think I'm getting 30 experience per... Yeah, 33, so... Holy sweet moly, that's a nice level up. Yes, Donald deserves the entire game because Donald's the best unit I've ever seen. I love that guy. Donald deserves my children. A cursed knight's always tapping into this affairs. Let's see, 5, 8, so she is going to level up if she kills him. I don't think Sane will, so I'll give him a little bit of- no, no matter what I do, then the knights are going to kill him. So what I'm going to do is just- I mean, it's fine. I can just attack him right now. I don't need to end my turn. See, but I've had, you know, bad luck where I've gotten hit with 38% chanters, chancers, and, um, I've been killed, like, countless times with 38% chance things. Ugh, that's that's a typical limo bullet, though. though. Like, I can't always get lucky. Oh, if only she had gotten her strength up on this one. Like, that's her only problem. She's very much a... Myrmidon... Archetype, except she's slightly weaker than, than like, the male Myrmidons will encounter, so... But she's a good unit. She gets a lot of hate from people, and I don't understand why. Like, maybe because everybody likes her, and so it's just cool to hate on her. But, um... 
Lynn's like one of my favorite characters slash units. Like, she's really reliable. And I've always liked sword masters more than heroes. And I think that there's a general, like, one side. Like, even if people like their mercs and heroes, or people like their myrmidons and sword masters. I don't know if there's a middle ground between there. I just like sword masters because I like the idea of these peerless swordsmen. Heroes are cool, though, don't get me wrong. They, they definitely hit harder. Lycia. That's the country beyond the mountains in the southwest, isn't it? Oh, don't get it. My favorite character in this game is actually Nino. I love... Nino's godlike, in my opinion. But, like, so many people... Give her crap, too, because, like... Yes, that's the whole point, right? Like, it's an, she's a unit that requires lots of attention and care. But if you give it to her... She's not gonna fail you. Like, she's gonna kick ass and take names. Uh, eventually, the Marcus simply discovered that he had no daughter. And then this year, we received a letter from Lady Madeline. It said that she, her husband, and their daughter were living happily on the Sakai Plains. The Marcus was ecstatic to learn he had a granddaughter of 18 years. I remember the smile on his face when he announced that he'd suddenly become a grandfather. The granddaughter's name is Lindis. This was also the name of the Marquis, Marquis's wife, who passed away at an early age. Lindis. That she should bear this name thought the Marcus's heart. Now his only wish is to meet his daughter's family at least once. This is why we're here. We didn't know that Lady Madeline died a few days after sending her letter. We only learned this shortly after we arrived here in Bulger. But we also learned that all was not lost, her daughter yet lives. We heard that she was living alone on the plains. I... I knew it immediately. You are the Lady Lindis. Why would you think that? Your resemblance to your departed mother is remarkable. What? Did you know my mother? I'm sorry to say I never met her directly, but I saw her portraits in Castle Kaelin. To the rest of my tribe, I was always Lynn, but when I was with my parents, when it was just the three of us, I was Lindis. It's all so strange. I was all alone in the world, and now I have a grandfather. Lindis, I never thought I would hear that name again. Wait, that bandit, he called me Lindis too. What? How could he have... He was a henchman of Lord Lundgren, wasn't he? Lundgren? Who's that? He's a Marcus's younger brother. Everyone assumed Lady Madeline was gone forever. This made Lord Lundgren heir to the Marquis's title. To be blunt, milady, your existence is an obstacle to your grand uncle's ambitions. That's... but I have no interest in inheriting any title. Unfortunately, your grand uncle is not the sort of man to believe that. I believe the attempt on your life will persist. What should I do? Accompany us to Kaelin. Continuing on this way is dangerous. I feel I have little choice, so I will go with you. Yeah. Oh, Ewan from uh, Sacred Stones, yes. Ewan is also god mode. He's like my favorite unit to make into a shaman. Matt, I'm sorry this changes everything. What will you do, Matt? You want me to decide? Of course, your companionship would do much to ease my journey, but it's going to be so dangerous. You'll come? Are you sure? Thank you. Let me ask once again for your friendship and your aid. A small altar lies on the outskirts of Bulgar. This ancient temple, sacred to the people of Sakai, has long been known for its powerful bond to the world of spirits. Before starting their journey, our travelers come here to pray for their well-being. At this altar, Lin's hand is directed to a grand inheritance. Da, 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 da. The God Mode Sword. She'd, <laughs> she'd have much better swords if her constitution wasn't so terrible, but... The Monikati is pretty much your best bet for having her be really good, unfortunately. Matt, hold a moment and allow me a short detour. This is a sacred sword, there is a sacred sword enshrined here in an altar east of here. The people of Sakai go there to pray for safety at the onset of a long journey. Oh, how quaint! The teachings of Elamin have the most, most followers in Lib. It is nice to see that here, at least, the ancient customs are still observed. Hold on, I think my phone is ringing, but I don't know. I feel bad, but I, like, it's unprofessional, so I'll just let it ring. Old man, stay where you are and hold your tongue. Right, nice meeting you too, Zed. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you again sometime. Thanks. Old man, stay where you are and hold your tongue. Threaten me as you will, but I'll not give up the Manikati. The Manikati is a sacred blade under divine protection. 
It cannot be removed from its place of rest. You're a fool, old man. What good's a sword if you don't use it? Use it and combat sacrilege. Sacrilege? I'm glass. The gods fear my name. My sword play is pissed.